uh, sir, prelims is approaching yes. and it's nearby. So, like around 100 days is left. Yeah. Uh, I'm very much uh, like confused and I have many worries regarding this exam. So okay, okay. Like, uh, I, I need like, a solution for this. Uh, okay, fine, good. So, uh, let me tell you, Agnes, this is uh, quite natural. This, uh, this, we are getting closer to examination, as you said, uh, 100 days left for prelims 2023. And it is quite natural, quite common among the UPC aspirants to feel a bit nervous or uh, tensed uh, when we are getting closer to this examination. Just accept the fact. Now, I would say, instead of focusing on that side, we have to focus on consolidation, revision, repeated revision parts of our preparation. That is very important. Uh, yeah, around 100 days left. Now here, what is very important, we have a syllabus that uh, we have that history, economy, geography, polity, environmental science, science and the current affairs kind of subjects to deal in paper one. And coming to prelims paper two, it is a aptitude test. So what we have to do is like we have to do justice to that preparation part. Last one year or one and a half year, we have done preparation in every subject. Now these days, I would say focus on consolidation, revise them very well, multiple rounds of revisions you have to give for each subject, consolidate the ideas or the concepts, whatever you covered in every subject. Then of course, there should be practice of questions also, yeah. every subject wise and topic wise, then the full length wise test you how to practice. I would say n number of the questions, UPC standard questions. UPC standard means whatever the standard they set for the last 10 to 12 years. Similar pattern questions you have to practice. So these things you have to take care in the last minute or in these last 100 days. Sir, I have worked out questions but yeah. like my, my main uh, mistake is like, uh, it's not a mistake, like my main issue is like uh, I am not able to cover up the Complete questions. Complete in the questions. Time yeah. Period, yeah. Time is there. That's that's also a common problem for many aspirants across India. Uh, now let me tell you, in paper one, they ask hundred questions, and one twenty minutes is the duration. Paper two, she said eighty questions, still uh, one twenty minutes duration. Now the fact is, coming to the paper one hundred questions, I would say it is always nice to go for X Y Z strategy of reading questions at least three round of readings we have to give uh, while uh, you know uh, attempting this prelims paper so what is that xyz strategy i would say as soon as you open the question booklet first 10 minutes you read all the 100 questions very quickly mm -hmm. then you classify them as x y z x y z means x is you know that is uh, you mark the questions X, you know, wherever you feel those questions, uh, you know, that is 100% uh, okay with you. I mean, you covered all these subjects out of 100 questions, 25 to 30 questions are asked from those areas which you covered very thoroughly. So you are 100% like accurate about to the answers of those questions. While going through the questions and their choices, yes, you come to a conclusion that yes, these 25 questions or 30 questions Yes, I'm damn sure with their answers. So those questions, I mean, wherever you feel the answers are very okay with me, this, those questions you can mark as X. So in the first round of reading, you will finish that X category questions, 25 or 30, okay? That will boost, automatically boost your confidence because 25 to 30 questions you made right means 25 into 2, which is 50 or 30 into 2 means it's 60. So that will give immense confidence to tackle or solve the rest of the questions. That second category of the question you will mark as why. They are moderate tough. Maybe a 50-50 dilemma concept is there. Maybe two options you know, okay. uh, two options you don't know. Or maybe 50-50 chance of surety and uncertainty. So such questions are moderate tough questions and that is marked as why. And the Z is the most toughest questions. So in the first 10 minutes of reading you categorize the 100 questions into these three baskets. X category, Y category, Z. X is for the easiest ones, Y is for the moderate tough and Z is for the toughest ones. Okay. Accordingly, you can attempt the questions. You can give three rounds of reading or three rounds of uh, answering the question. I mean, you see, for example, 100 questions. When you finish the first 30, second round, you have to read only 70 questions. Okay. In the second, second round, you go for that uh, what is called uh, yeah, Y category. Maybe you selected 
20, 20 to 30 questions as Y category. Again, out of that 70, this uh, 30 is minus, you know, that is deducted and uh, only remaining questions you have to go for the final round. It's not necessary all the three round times you have to read all the 100 questions. Oh. That is a problem with many aspirants, you know, they uh, randomly solve the questions mm -hmm. and they are getting confused which one I solved, which one not solved. Okay. So that thing and also once you answer a question, Simultaneously, I would say that at the same time, you just go for the OMR sheet, you darken the bubble. Don't leave that, uh, you know, darkening bubble final. I mean, once you finish all the 100 questions and finding out the answers, after finishing all 100 questions, then you will go for that particular job. That is a foolish idea. Sometimes, you know, you will find with uh, um, a mismatching or sometimes you will make that uh, technical errors and all things will be there. So I would say simultaneously you do that uh, uh, OMR sheet work also, okay, so completely, also, yeah. Uh, so also like uh, while attending, uh, like I have attended many mock tests and uh, like test series, Okay. but uh, while I am making more attempts, my negatives are also increasing. Yeah, the there. negatives actually, let me tell you one thing that uh, the problem with the negatives is like, uh, see, uh, coming to prelims examination, one of the biggest thing we have to take care is like uh, you see there is no such a hardcore rule that you have to do like this, do like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I said this categorization classification of the questions into three category. Then also there is a choice like uh, maybe your favorite subject is history or economy or geography or polity or environmental science or current affairs. You may feel that uh, yes, uh, this is my strongest area. Okay, I will do all these questions first. In the first go or in the first and second rounds, I will do all my favorite areas or my easiest areas. Okay, you just do that. Then you go for the tougher ones so that you will get a time for thinking, rethinking or maybe considering their choices and you will get to that time for applying the eliminations and all those things. It is not necessary in a one go, you have to start with the first question to 100 question. And the problem is like maybe the first five questions you answered and uh, uh, probably it gone wrong, then automatically the pressure will shoot up. You may feel that uh, at any cost I have to make the sixth question right. Mm. Again, you know, you come up with the wrong answer. Then automatically, you know, the uh, blood pressure, it is uh, shooting up, 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 you see. Me. So there is no such a hardcore rule that you have to start f with the very first question or start with the 100 question. Nothing is there. Whichever your comfort areas, you do them first. Whichever your easier areas, do them first. Okay. Uh, so that way you can... Uh, like uh, uh, strategize uh, solving the questions and uh, uh, accuracy. I said this X, Y, Z, three rounds of reading that will automatically boost your accuracy also. So it is not necessary. You must attempt 80 plus questions. Mm -hmm. Even you feel that, okay, my 40 to 50 questions or 55 to 60 questions are accurate, mm -hmm. attempt accurate hit. That is sufficient. No one says UPC chairman or UPC board, nobody will say that you how to attempt all the 100 questions, okay. So there uh, simultaneously you think what is your, that cost benefit ratio analysis has to be done simultaneously. You attempted this much questions, how many questions you attempted right, how many questions you attempted wrong, accordingly you go for the further attempts, okay. These all things you know is exercised in the mock test. That is why I would say along with your revision part and uh, consolidation part, these uh, test series also n number of the questions upc standard questions you have to practice okay sir sir also uh, like uh, when we are dealing with csat no uh, when, while i am working out uh, i used to get the solution i used no. to solve the uh, like uh, quantum questions and all okay but while uh, writing this mock test i get stuck with the question like okay. i i feel like oh this pattern i haven't uh, learned so, uh, things fine. like that so what yeah, that's uh, regarding CSAT, 80 questions are there, mm -hmm. but the challenge is that you have to attempt 50 plus questions. It is uh, 2.5, but still it has the negatives. Mm -hmm. If you, you know, done uh, wrong answers, of, of course, negative is there. Now, the fact is like uh, in 120 minutes, how to attempt 50 plus questions, especially covering quantity aptitude or this, uh, what is called uh, reasoning and this comprehension, etc. Again, I'm telling you, practice is the king here, okay. You should not, I mean, uh, coming to CSAT, I would say, uh, should not focus only on comprehension part, should not focus only on reasoning part, should not focus only on that uh, quantity aptitude. Mm -hmm. Because last several years, many of my students have done this kind of the mistake. 
uh, they f- f- feel like this okay comprehension is my strongest area i will only focus on comprehension mm-hmm. or maths is my strongest area i will only focus on maths mm-hmm. reasoning is my co- strongest area i will focus on reasoning actually uh, upsc is always unpredictable actually coming to this is that i would say you must how mastery over you must how a control over this all the three areas of csat mm-hmm. you should have good practice of comprehension reasoning and uh, counter related questions too mm-hmm. so it is always nice the wisest strategy is like uh, according to the syllabus all the three areas you know broadly speaking all the three areas must be covered in a smoother manner mm-hmm. and you have to revise them lot of times especially last uh, 10 to 12 years questions okay you practice them very well okay comprehension can be you know they asked uh, descriptive uh type of paragraph passages or analytical types of the passages uh, hypothetical type of the passages so sometimes it can can be the toughest ones mm. similar way even though we say it's 10th level maths mm. sometimes it is uh, you know much beyond the understanding of the mtech guys okay so the thing is like i mean it is not like that it will take a lot of time to find out or come to a conclusive answer mm. so the fact is you practice a lot whatever that type of the questions you should be in a comfort position in a, in a position to attempt 50 plus questions and score about 70 or 70 plus even though 60 70 something is the like a qualifying marks okay? okay so focus on all the three areas and practice a lot sir also like uh, with regard to this uh, paper one mm. we have many subjects to deal with okay, and okay. Uh, Uh, subjects like economy history and it's too vast also okay 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 we used to forget things like uh, we might have studied but okay. we used to forget things uh, when we are attending the questions so fine, how fine. to tackle it down yeah the fact is very simple if we watch some very interesting movies and uh, we will never forget the uh, screenplay the characters dialogue delivery action choreography nothing we will forget it is always there in the mind because we enjoy that and we got involved into that okay mm-hmm. sometimes we also feel that we are part of that okay so similar way coming to history kind of subjects history is not like a mugging up facts and figures history is like a just try to uh, you know like uh, you be an actor or you try to live in that particular uh, what is called uh, uh, that 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 scenario for, for example in the civilization mm-hmm. yeah you just to try to behave like uh, yes you are one of the guy in the civilization one you, you belong to in the civilization you do that uh, barter things and all you are a, a trader you are a merchant uh, traveling to mesopotamia and uh, you have that kind of that uh, like uh, urban settlements and uh, from your perspective you try to understand in the civilization as an indus man or indus women things will be much easier for you Okay. similar way you think about that aryans mm-hmm. advent of aryans arrival of aryans think from aryan perspective mm-hmm. what was india where they settled what was their village settlement their social composition about their life religion practice etc what i say try to involve into that particular scene mm-hmm. or that particular uh, you know that that event mm-hmm. things will so here it's i would say that uh, rather than mugging about the facts and figures Uh, try to uh, you know try 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 to script a story okay these things are happening like this because of these you know cost to benefit elements are the mm-hmm. uh, or maybe the cause and effect elements are the mm-hmm. so you see that uh, okay these things are happening because of these things mm-hmm. or uh, these things happened and the results were like this okay It's try to connect things. interconnect the events and try to build up kind of various episodes of an event you know these all are interconnected they all have a past they all have a present they all have a future okay so just like a story you try to involve into that and things will be much easier for you as far as economy is concerned one of the very very high yielding subject in the prelims and it is highly dynamic and uh, i would say Uh, subjects like economy you have to study from uh, main angle you know it's a uh, main so what all the things i mean i would say like uh, national income inflation money and banking or uh, public finance or um, agri industries what all things you cover in fact all those things are important even we were pre- for prelims also so it is it is always nice to have a broader approach towards your economy and it should be integrated static with the dynamic it should not be like that you study all the static first 
then again you go for the current affairs or the dynamic portions of economy next time that is a blunder idea when you study be it national income money and banking what all things you study try to integrate its static with the dynamic portions and also approach economy from main syllabus point of view so you will have a wider coverage including the budget you know you will have a wider coverage and that is one of the easiest solution to tackle with these uh, economic questions so now you said about like mains preparation uh -huh. now uh, since the prunes have approached i okay. have stopped my answer writing okay okay, so, okay okay like i don't know whether it's like uh, a good practice or okay, okay, uh, okay. i have to restart it again but okay. I, since I'm a bit tense about prelims, okay. I have stopped it. Okay. So, whether I have to continue to work. So, I it? would say, you see, there are lots of subjects that they are thoroughly interconnected with your main syllabus or interlinked with your mains. For example, history. When you study history, uh, ancient, medieval, modern, or art and culture, it's it's actually integrated prelims mains it, it should not be see non cooperation movement you can study non cooperation movement only for prelims mm -hmm. when you study uh, non cooperation you have to cover its prelims and mains angles then only you can answer even the prelims questions even though there is objective and uh, subjective questions coming to prelims obviously it is not necessary they must ask the factual questions from this mm -hmm. they can ask analytical questions too so the thing is all always all these subjects like history economy geography polity or environmental science i would say that uh, you always build up an integrated approach integrated strategy to cover the syllabus of these subjects uh, if you look into that uh, cost to benefit ratio aspect also that will be much time saving that will be giving you an opportunity for multiple rounds of revisions that will also help you to integrate that current affairs parts with your static portions okay and coming to mains exclusive i would say uh, this time exclusive things like uh, ethics or maybe essay paper or some exclusive mains portions like world history or the society such things can be if you not covered so far you just leave it for after prelims even after prelims in uh, one month you can easily very quickly finish all those areas okay but i strongly believe you guys might have done at least a little bit of these yeah, things. I have gone yeah, through yeah, the yeah, syllabus fine. and uh, I know the portions, but yes, the yes, answer yes. writing is... Yes, yes, yes. Fine, a... fine. No issues. Actually, answer writing, I would say, don't take too much time for that. At least uh, like a daily half an hour, 40 minutes, 45 minutes, you can spend for answer writing. There is nothing wrong with that. Because these subjects like uh, security or international relations or uh, disaster management or economy or uh, developmental issues or the social justice topics, etc., when you study them, see, it automatically contributes to your prelims preparation also. So, answer writing cannot be developed in a day or two. You think that after prelims, I will do answer writing. That is actually, it's, 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 a, it's a top in idea, I would say. In two months, it's not possible. So, answer writing, I would say, it is nothing wrong with answer writing, but don't consume so much time for that. One hour is enough every day if you could ra return some answers, uh, two, uh, one or two answers and get it, uh, uh, you know, corrected by your mentors, respective mentors. That practice will help you in the final exam because the final challenge is mains every paper three hours. Duration is three hours and it is 250 marks, 20 questions, half of them are uh, uh, having 150 words each, half of them having 250 words each. So, a single answer of 150 words finishing in 6.5 or maybe uh, in 6.5 uh, minutes or 7 minutes, that is not an easy thing or 250 words in 11 minutes is not an easy thing for which practice matters a lot. So, nothing wrong with answer writing, you practice nowadays for the papers like this uh, security, international relations, social justice, society, disaster management. Uh, there are areas you can do answer writing, nothing wrong in that. Don't consume so much time over that. Okay, sir. Okay. Sir, also like uh, optional course like... Optional, I would say, I, I hope by this time almost all the aspirants have um, at least covered the syllabus. Yeah. Yeah, e even though not taken these uh, test series and answer writings, at least they have covered the syllabus of uh, paper one, paper two. Now I would say you just, I mean, no need to take a full length test series right now. But I would say that uh, you can give some answer writing to paper one, unit wise you can give answer writing in paper one or paper two. Uh, because uh, just like what I said in GS papers of mains, optional also demands a lot of time for your refinement. Yeah. 
they are also answer writing you you know your structure your presentation your content articulation the way you conclude an answer the way you introduce an answer the way you like you know fit that case studies examples or your uh, justifications to arguments counter arguments all matters mm -hmm. an answer has to be a well structured well balanced answer so out of blue all of a sudden you try to build up the structure presentation content part of answer that is not an easy job so optional also i would say uh, it's it's at least uh, thrice in a week you can do optional you, you done the syllabus you yes. completed the syllabus then uh, thrice in a week you can do answer writing part of your optional that is also fine don't consume too much time but uh, still you have time for optional at least till this march you can do uh, like uh, one hour one and a half hour or two hours for your uh, optional preparation especially answer writing part also Okay, sir, yeah. I'll do it. Fine. Okay. At least three days in a week you can do for your optional. Yeah. yeah sure. Sir, that's a, like it was very helpful. I didn't. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I was very much tense. So yeah. Like, I think uh, what all Agnes asked me, these are some common concerns to many of our aspirants, online, offline aspirants. So this is our, uh, you know, this interaction is to support all of you guys. If you find this preparation difficult, just to take care of these aspects, this will definitely help you. Uh, to reduce your negatives and uh, negative marks and to, of course to increase enhance your accuracy now again i'm telling you these days don't be tensed about uh, what you have not done okay uh, actually that is uh, you know that is waste waste of time waste of time so i'm telling you just focus on what all things you have done so far you have done history economy geography polity environmental science current affairs and she said Yes, fine. This is the syllabus of the examination. Yeah, you just focus on those areas, give multiple rounds of revisions, and do practice a lot of questions. I would say before your final exam, you must have a target of finishing. Target, verbally speaking, you must have a target of finishing at least ten thousand questions, including your uh, mock test series you enrolled for. So you can practice previous year questions. You can practice model questions. Okay. So just try to. attempt minimum 10000 questions and uh, that obviously you can do at least upsc has this much years question papers question banks are available with anyone everyone and also many uh, reputed institutes are also providing mock test series so of course the quality test series you have to uh, practice so that practice also i mean revision should also have that uh, practice part and that will definitely help you to get it off the unwanted tensions and it will enhance your accuracy and it will help you to uh, like uh, shoot up or maybe it will help uh, help you to uh, increase your score in the prelims too okay so that's uh, my humble advice to all of you so that's it uh, agnes thank, thank you. you thank, thank you, you.